Um, I am Des Dickerson. I am VP of BizOps at Lightning Labs and um, have the privilege of working with this gentleman. Yeah, I'm, I'm Alex Bosworth. I'm the Lightning Infrastructure Lead at Lightning Labs. Um, I'm working on Bitcoin and Lightning for a few years now. It's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, my name is Graham. I'm the founder and CEO of Voltage, and we are a Lightning Node hosting provider. Uh, so we help businesses uh, bring Lightning infrastructure into their existing products and services and help make that process a lot easier for them. Cool. I'm Brian Murray. I'm a partner at Craft Ventures. Um, we were fortunate enough to back Lightning Labs super early, and then I've been working with a bunch of Lightning companies, including uh, Graham's company. So good to be here. Uh, yo, my name is Jack. <laughs> I'm, uh, oh, I love Bitcoin. I will die on this hill. I'm probably uh, most well known for being the CEO of Strike. I'm a big proponent of Lightning and open monetary networks, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, definitely round of applause for these gentlemen. Um, so I think um, one of the last times we were all kind of in the same space was the Lightning Conference in 2019, um, which is kind of wild. Um, awesome conference, much smaller. Um, but one of the things that I've personally noticed, um, you know, being there and kind of hosting that event was there's just so many more people building in the space, so many more companies um, building in the space. And I think it's like well over 5x um, for like the people who are building on the Lightning Network. Um, and Brian, I, I do want to kick it off with you because you know you are like definitely leading the charge in terms of VCs who are in the know with Lightning, and like you, you are definitely the most well known. Um, but what it, what type of growth are you personally seeing as a VC, and like what what areas are you most excited about? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it seems like TLC was just yesterday, but I guess it was a while ago now. Um, the the Entrepreneurs that I think are, are doing a lot of good work for Lightning are um, those that are introducing the tech to sort of the edges. So actually like what Jack's doing with Strike is awesome. Um, Paul Etoy, what he's building with Sphinx, what Will and the Fold team are building. They're basically extending um, this technology out to people who may not even give a shit about the Lightning Network, but they're getting value out of it because of how it works. Um, so that's kind of at the edges, but then there's also the, um, the people building the infrastructure for those entrepreneurs to do, in, to do what they're doing. So like what Graham's doing uh, with Voltage, building infrastructure as a service for these entrepreneurs. Um, so it's kind of the, this beautiful combination of people like Jack pushing the limits, uh, and then people like Lightning Labs and Graham who are building the, the tooling for those entrepreneurs to keep going. Um, so it's been really exciting the last year to see that. No, no, definitely, that's awesome. And like speaking kind of of the infrastructure, I think um, I kind of want to touch on that. And Graham, um, obviously, like a huge part of being a part of this community is, you know, a lot of people are like running your own node. And I mean, Alex, you are literally the expert at of routing nodes. Um, you are the king of routing nodes. So um, I, I do want to get into nodes a little bit. But like, Graham, what do you see um, as the future of like, how end users and how businesses are actually like running their own nodes, or, like what does the future of that look like? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's. I think I like to take a very pragmatic approach to the infrastructure because if anyone saw Ryan Gentry's talk a few hours ago, we're still really early in how this all is working. Um, we think we have like it's obviously functioning really well right now, but I think it's going to continue to evolve. Uh, where we are going to make it even easier for the end users to run their own nodes or you know participate in the network. And then also uh, add more robustness to the business side of things, where you can run um, you know, really robust, highly available infrastructure for these big exchanges, these, the really big players that are trying to incorporate Lightning. Um, and I, I, like I said, I'm trying to take a pragmatic approach, but I could even see them diverging a little bit, where we're making it even easier for the end users, but then also making super robust solutions for the enterprise. Uh, and so I think that they can, they might start to diverge a little bit, but I think that's going to be a good thing where we make it super easy, super uh, unique solutions. Like Alex and I have talked quite a bit about uh, ways that we can make it easier for um, all kinds of people to, to use Lightning, whether it's with your own node or custodial solutions, whatever it is. Uh, and then also solving the issue of the enterprise and you know mission critical lightning deployments and how to make that work. So uh, I think we're very early, but I think we're it's it's going to be uh, easier on both sides. You know as we just keep pushing forward. Yeah. How do you find that balance between like building for both? Like it's very difficult to build for both. Like I mean, how how do you plan mm -hmm. to tackle that? 
Yeah, I mean, they're, you're right. They're very, they're very uh, different problems to solve. Um, and I think that a lot of the mobile wallets out there have done a really good. Breeze, Moon, all of those like those wallets. And then um, you think about Strike, what they're doing has like made it like even easier. And so what I really like about Bitcoin and Lightning is you have the optionality to run your own node or use a custodial solution. You can choose your trust model and what you want to participate in. Um, and so I, I, that's what I find really interesting about the whole space is you can choose the level of involvement and what services you want to use. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and then Alex, I mean, I don't know if you have anything to comment on that, but um, you know, kind of on the routing node front, we're seeing more and more people, um, especially with some of the stuff that we've been releasing, um, people just very interested in becoming a routing node, like you know, earning yield also on, on the network. Like, what do you kind of foresee, like the future of like people running routing nodes and like what the future of that looks like or what do you hope also like I know I know that you have an idea of what this should look like yeah I mean one of the big ideas of Bitcoin in the beginning was everybody can start mining and participating in a peer-to-peer -peer global economy I'm gonna I'm gonna get some money like we've kind of gone away from that because mining has become industrialized but we are returning to that with routing nodes where there is now the possibility that without any kind of fancy equipment, you could just buy a Raspberry Pi off the shelf, plug it in, and start participating in this peer-to-peer -peer economy. Um, so I, th I think that's a, that's a big marketing drive. Like, that's getting people excited about Bitcoin and Lightning. But it also is a way to kind of kickstart this peer-to-peer -peer economy that I think is, is very important for Bitcoin uh, going forward, that it has a, has a closed-loop economy where people are buying and selling and in a way that's non-constrained. That's, that's what routing is. It's somebody paying you to move money for them. And I think it's very exciting that anybody can participate in that. No, I, I love that. And I want to get back to um, some more on that. But like speaking of these like, you know, closed circular economies, I, I, want, I want to touch on kind of what Jack is building and what he's been actually doing mm -hmm. in El Salvador. And at Lightning Labs, we talk so much about bringing Bitcoin to the next billion people. And we truly, truly believe that the Lightning Network and what folks are building on Lightning is what's going to make that happen. And so I wanted to touch on, like, one, obviously what Strike is doing, um, what you're doing in El Salvador, and, like, what, how you're seeing, like, this take hold and how, how you see the future of it kind of growing. Yeah. I think uh, I've, I've said this a lot. I think that one of the most powerful properties that Bitcoin has is that it's open. And as a monetary network, uh, if, you, if you look at monetary networks like the Visa network and the Square network, they all achieve the same things. And what Bitcoin was missing before Lightning is cash finality and any form of file, final clearance that would allow for any form of general commerce. And with Lightning, we get finality with uh, uh, instant, near instant and near cheap uh, are basically free uh, cash finality. We remove those variables. And, now you have an open monetary network that works. It works in El Salvador, the same it works in Chicago, the same it works in London, the same it works in New York, and that's a very, very powerful concept. And you have a, you have a chance to reinstall very basic general human freedoms. I mean, money is one of the most viral products of all time, and it's the most popular product of all time. It's a necessity to live a high-quality life. And now you have a monetary network that you can deliver to people that are probably generously 250 years behind that's deeply impacted the quality of their life and now we have a monetary network that functions and can deliver a, a vertical financial service um, to fix that. And so as soon as we built the MVP of Strike, it was a no-brainer for me to go get on the ground and see how I can make up 250 years worth of time in El Salvador uh, and deliver a financial experience on an open monetary network that doesn't carry any bias. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then I, I was listening to Peter talk um, recently on a clubhouse that we hosted, and he was just talking about obviously, like, you know, there's an aspect of access just like, you know, for the everyday user. But, like, I mean, how are you seeing this also empower merchants in these communities as well? Yeah, uh, the, the reason open monetary networks win or open networks win generally is because of the network effects, right? The economies of scale. If you think that Strike is built on the Bitcoin network in the same way that Venmo is built on the PayPal network. We already have more employees than PayPal. You can't compete with that. And all, all you have to do is plug in and become interoperable with the standard that a lot of bright people contribute to, like Alex, that's public and it's on the internet. Uh, and so it's a no-brainer for merchants. You don't have to compromise and give up your relationship with Visa. You just become interoperable with this thing and it catches on like wildfire. 
Uh, and because it's open, it's a race to the bottom, and so everything will eventually be free. You can't justify and keep guard and safeguard any sort of interchange or any pricing like that. Um, so it's been explosive. I mean, there there's at one point before uh, I needed to shotgun a, a fierce hiring of customer support, we were onboarding between 20 and 25,000 Salvadorians a day. Uh, and so it's magical and uh, it was special to experience on the ground. Uh, and Bitcoin is hope, like Michael Saylor says, but it's, it's really powerful to see people think of themselves differently because they're scanning the same QR codes we are. It, it's, a, it's very powerful and we're happy with what we've done so far. No, I love that. Bitcoin for, for the next billion, not billionaires. I mean, the billionaires are welcome, but we're focusing on the next billion. I love that. Um, and so one thing, Brian, I wanted to get your take um, because you literally get to see everything. And I think at Lightning Labs, we're really lucky to be able to like really help the community and, and see what everyone's building. And, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of folks who've been um, kind of in this game for a while, but what I love about Lightning is that not only it's like, okay, hey, we can, we can do what we've already been doing, but like faster, cheaper, and even easier, but it's actually enabling like very novel use cases. So, you know, if you see what like Zebedee is doing with, um, with gaming and breaking like the, the fourth wall between like the player and streamers, um, but then, you know, like impervious with doing like VPN on the Lightning network. Like, what are you seeing as like these, like, what are your like favorite use cases of right now? What do you think is possible in the future? Uh, yeah, actually, um, so when I first partnered with Lightning Labs, it was mostly like theory, what the Lightning Network could be. And um, a buddy of mine, this guy Jim Patterson, um, we were sitting down actually at Crypto Springs like two years ago. And we're like, all right, if you, could, if you could transmit any amount of value to anybody anywhere, so long as they had an internet connection instantly, like what would you do with that? What's the killer use case? And um, I happened to also be investing in some like AI and computer vision companies. So I knew about this like mechanical Turk data labeling space. And so the two concepts combined, I was like, okay, if you can distribute jobs to people anywhere, like digital jobs, and then pay them in Satoshis as they're completing the jobs, that would be like, in, that's like an insane opportunity. So I was actually like ready to, to quit and, and build this thing myself. <laughs> Um, and then uh, I, I decided to like search around to see if anybody was doing it. Sure enough, this guy, Paul, was building, at the time it was called LND Work, now it's called Stack. But yeah, it's basically a mechanical Turk where they take jobs from rich American companies that need data labeling to be done. They get paid in fiat, they convert that to Bitcoin, they pay out in Satoshis to people anywhere in the world. Um, I, I think that's a... That's still one of the most inspiring use cases that, because it's like, it's similar to what Jack's doing, like economic empowerment uh, and getting work out to these people as well as getting like the financial infrastructure. So that's, that's always been kind of my, you know, yeah. near and dear to me. No, yeah, yeah, Sphinx, our stack is awesome, but Sphinx as well, like all the streaming use cases for like audio, um, video type of stuff is really cool. I don't know, Alex, what are, what are your favorites right now that people are building? Um. I, I'm just very excited about the routing network because people are making money and it's like a very vibrant, like sustainable economy. Um, and I think that's, that is remarkable. Like the fact that you can, it, it's kind of like mining that you can uh, pay a fee and then without any company the, that there's a market process that just decides which transactions uh, get mined into a block and which, which do not. And th that, I don't think that's a trivial thing of, of creating a new market, especially one where if something goes wrong, there's nobody who can come in and say, oh, I'm fixing it. This is something that has to be working without anybody able to override it and something where everybody can op openly join. You don't have to get permission from somebody to say, no, I'm part of this network. Um, so that's, and, and it's pure Bitcoin, right? You're, what you're, do, you're doing is working completely within Bitcoin. You're, you're doing, offering a Bitcoin native service. So, I mean, that's just my favorite. No, I, I love that. And something I wanted to ask you about, because like, I feel like we never get to talk anymore, like being so remote, is you, re you recently tweeted about a new protocol concept for Lightning called 805.805. And you talked about routing being one of routing being really only one of the many potential services um, that a node can actually offer. So I, I want to like hear a little bit more about that because like that's something I haven't even thought about. It's just like, you know, nodes are just for routing. Like what else is possible? What do you foresee? 
Well, yeah, I think mining and routing are kind of two examples of a global marketplace that anybody can join. But I, I think that potentially this is the start of many different markets that could all be global, that could be open for participation for everybody. Um, and I think that that's also stemming from Satoshi's original ideas. Like in, when Bitcoin was first released, you could actually send a message to somebody over the network. And when you made a payment, you could, you could include a little message. Um, and that was removed because it's not scalable. Um, and th th there was also a marketplace, uh, like the beginnings of a marketplace built into Bitcoin. And that was removed also because it's not super scalable. But what we're doing with Lightning is not just scaling the payments that we see today. We could also be scaling future use cases that uh, you know, never were, were able to exist because of those scaling limitations. Um, so uh, I I'm trying to raise awareness of the ability of the Lightning Network to restore that capability to send messages. So when you send a payment, you can include a message about what the payment's related to. And if you take that a step further, the message can be a computer message, an API. So you can uh, interact with somebody, and we can really turn Satoshi's into this programmable money layer that help enable other kinds of applications. And um, that's something that I built out as a, as a demo of a two-way payment. So not only am I sending you a message with money about what I want, you respond to me with a payment, and you include the response in your payment. And now we have a layer where we can create new applications. No, yeah, I love that. Graham, did you have something to add? I see you nodding. Here. Yeah, I think just a good way to like kind of tie it in with like everything that everyone is saying is that the kind of typical rule book on like how to build businesses or write applications is like it's kind of like old school now, right? Like with these applications, you can really you have a whole new way of approaching how you build things. And I think Jack's a perfect example of Strike. It's like you don't have to, you don't have to abide by the typical rules, right? You can kind of go on your own. And Paul with Sphinx Chat. And you can um, create these totally new like microeconomies or whatever uh, in your applications and be able to, what, I really, what I'm really excited about is the direct link between like um, content consumer and content creator and being able to uh, have a direct relationship without the intermediaries. And I think that that's something that's super exciting to me. And I think that as people build new applications, I think that's like the approach you should start with first is like, how can I do this with like, you know, completely peer to peer? I, I have a few thoughts. I think the market that Alex is describing, I think the demand and what companies like Strike are willing to pay for is um, making cost of capital more efficient. One of the tremendous wins that Bitcoin allows for in the business that I run is that transfer-wise cost of capital is astronomically high, right? The balance sheet float, how many euros, pounds, uh, Mexican pesos, dollars are they holding on their balance sheet to achieve settlement in a three to seven day business period? Strike's cost of capital is 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes we can run our loop script and refill through HTLCs, refuel our channels, and our cost of capital to run global financial infrastructure is whatever we need to service our users for the next 10 fucking minutes. That is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I think what Alex is describing in having a high performance routing node is improving the efficiency of cost of capital. And when you look at a business like TransferWise, I mean, they don't have a, they don't have a chance. And that's where I think a lot of these marketplaces are going to win because it's what businesses are going to be willing to pay for. That's a huge, huge bottom line win. And then also on like what new use cases does Lightning introduce, there's obviously plenty. I think that the killer app is a natively digital money that's global. It's on an open network. It runs 24-7 and carries a sufficient liquidity profile on any currency ever. And instead of having to force ourselves to come up with something new, how about we turn around and look at what's old and be like, I think with that, the properties of that system, we can build the best financial experience on the planet in a Bitcoin native bank. And I don't need to introduce any new use cases to show you how important this is. So I don't know. I do, I am excited about the new use cases, but I'm really excited to question the PayPals of the world and ask them what their plan is now. And, and I think that people don't give enough credit for that. We didn't build this to like make video games cooler. I think it's bigger than that. No, I mean, yeah, they're totally right. Like, yeah, I mean, that's like Elizabeth always says, like if 
Bitcoin, it's not just a rock, right? Like, that's what we're building, is like, that's the true power, is like, the financial freedom, the transactions, um, that's really what it's all about. Um, and I just like want to bring it back to like one more question, then we can do some Q&A, um, is one thing that, um, you know, I think that we're thinking a lot about, which is like, okay, we have this amazing community, and I think this will be interesting, for, like, on your point, Jack, where it's like, okay, we have all these people building on Lightning, but how do we actually expand outside of like the Bitcoin and Lightning community and get devs who are not like into Lightning and Bitcoin, like building businesses, like building towards this like ultimate goal? Like how do we bring them into this into this ecosystem? Whether whether it be like us like building technical guides or you know like whether it be a narrative, like where, what do you see as like the biggest barrier and how do we like bring that down and like bring more people into like what we're building? I don't know. Yeah, I'll go. I mean, I think, especially in an open system, the best experience wins. You can't win on pricing or legacy because it's open. Someone can just copy you and make it cheaper or make it cooler. It's the, like, optimized for the best experience. Uh, and so I think what we're doing at Strike is, is looking at what experience someone would want as a developer, as a business, as a consumer. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with the volatility of Bitcoin if I'm building some streaming service and I want to leverage an API. I don't want to deal with taxes. I don't want to have to account for all of that. And so what we're trying to do is solve for a lot of the pain points that just packages what is tremendously beautiful, which is the, the best monetary network of all time with instant cash finality that's global, it's borderless, it's 24-7. Uh, and so we, we are launching our API likely uh, in the month of June. Uh, and I think our target audience is everyone. Um, why, and and I, I think though it's very important uh, that we solve those problems and relieve people that aren't familiar with Bitcoin of problems that are tr tremendously painful. <laughs> and so that, that's my opinion, optimize for the experience and uh, yeah. Love that. Yeah, I, I, would, I would just add that um, there's the entrepreneurs creating new stuff and like I'm all about the entrepreneurs but also um, if anybody in this room is working at like an old school company, like a Visa or something like that, if you can be the entrepreneur within that company to help evangelize Lightning and get them to wake up and start investing into it, that will also help the network. It's not just about new stuff, it's about uh, helping, it's like uh, what Elon did with Tesla, right? It's like pushing the electric cars, but he's pulling the entire industry with him. So, um, you know, I think we should should help bring along the incumbents as we're building this as well. And I think people are, I think people are generally confused that there's now an open monetary network. It's the first one. And in an open system, new participants to the network strengthen it. And in any network, right? Uh, and so what people would deem as competitive is actually additive to your business. If someone launches a strike in Australia, that's fucking great. That's not a bad thing because now dollars in Australian dollars can achieve instant transaction finality at near no cost any time of the day, right, on weekends. Uh, and so I think the squares and the visas are kind of sitting here like, wait, are we competing? Are we together? And I think everyone's a little confused on what the future looks like, um, but I think you, you cannot, underestimate and underappreciate the power of the network effects that are going to come um, because yeah w once the first few gets off the ground like what we're doing at Strike I think is inspiring a lot of these big companies and then once they go then you either were on the right side of history or you're behind. Yeah it's, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Did you guys have anything to add? Uh, go ahead. Yeah I, like I kind of see a parallel between uh, the rise of open source like, versus proprietary software. Uh, you know, it wasn't just that we were born with this open source software movement. Uh, this is a lot of hard work from people going in different directions that was difficult. And uh, one thing that was an enabling technology was the licensing. So that you would have this MIT license and now it allows other people to reuse it and it allows people from all over the world to contribute on the same software project. So that's kind of how I see Bitcoin. It, Bitcoin kind of says, well, there's this proprietary business system where you have to get permission to enter it. But we have a new enabling technology, Bitcoin, that allows anybody to enter it. Anybody can, can build the applications they want to build. They can build the commerce. So it's kind of like proprietary commerce versus open commerce. Awesome. Graham, with the last minute. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think what everyone else has said is really good. And I think just uh, getting more people on board with like what Brian said and just um, I think 
just get more builders, right? Get more people creating apps and APIs, whatever it is, just to make this all easier to use. Um, and I think that that's gonna, you know, help just bring up uh, everyone. You know, the the developers are kind of first, right? So I think we got to really help them out, and then it'll bring up, you know, everyone else with it. Awesome. Well, cool guys. It was an honor. We're, we have just a minute left, so we will wrap it up here. Um, but thank you guys, and thank you for all you do, all you do for Bitcoin and Lightning and the whole community. So, round of applause. Thank you, Des.